welcome to my first video. Today I'd like to show you how I alter my magic cards with gold leaf um, with a process called gilding. I apologize for the camera quality throughout. I should have it sorted for next time. These planeswalkers combine a couple of the different techniques that I use when I'm gilding. First they were gilded um, completely covering everything with imitation gold. Then I distressed it and went back and highlighted a few details by gilding over the top. I think this aged and distressed look would work pretty well with artifact and colourless cards, because I think it could make them look a bit more like ancient relics or something. Um, I think this would also be a great way to save a super bashed up old card that's seen better days. Maybe it's been through the wash and it's all bent up with the corners fraying, but you can kind of make it look intentional because you're distressing it anyway. Um, for instance, I got this copy of Brago off card market in pretty poor condition, which I don't mind because I'm definitely going to alter this um, at some point in the same way. And I think it's going to look quite cool. Um, I do have a lot of cards in that category of things that I said I was going to alter and haven't got around to. Most of all, this entire commander deck, which I'm going to show you part of now. I'll see if you can guess the commander the further I get through the stack. It should become more obvious once I get to the creatures. I find full art lands are super fun to alter because they can go in any deck and they don't cost a lot. So they're great to practice on. Um, you don't have to worry about covering rules text or anything like that. And you don't have to mo like worry about the details so much with the landscapes. Um, so I'd recommend you start with a full art land or a basic land um, just to try out a few things. Because you're not going to get upset if you ruin one of your commanders or something. Um, they can still look pretty cool as well. Um, it's like a fun space to try out whatever you want to try out. Another thing you can do with gold leaf is combine it with other things like paint or draw over the top of the leaf. You could paint the card first um, and then just gild a few details over the top. Let's just stick to the basics for now. Um, that's all of the basic lands. I still have to alter the non-basics, um, but I will move on to the creatures now. I was more sparing with the gold leaf on these angels because I wanted the focal point to be on the wings. Um, some of them I gilded all over, like the planeswalkers, but... I think it depends on the original art, what works best for each card. Sometimes it's obvious which parts you want to pick out, like on the wings, but sometimes it's kind of tough to decide if the contrast is a bit muted or the image is kind of one colour anyway. It's like, hmm, should I add embellishments? Um, like this card I wasn't too happy with because I thought... Yeah, cool, I'll add some flames, but then I just end up covering the whole thing in swirls, and I think I kind of saved it with the uh, the glittery bits, but it's a learning process, and don't be disheartened if the first ones you try don't go so well. You will improve over time and get used to working with the leaf a bit more. This is also why I encourage you to start with cards that you don't care about um, because I've still got my Teferi's protection here that I'm not sure if I can bring myself to alter it at all because it's an expensive card. Um, I still have all the demons to start on and I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet. Maybe I should try and find some darker more purple leaf because um, I'm not sure that I like these bright gold colours with the dark backgrounds. You can get loads of different colours of imitation leaf, which is one of the perks of 
um, using the imitation over real gold or silver. I haven't varnished any of these, um, but I'll show you um, later what it looks like varnished or unvarnished or with oil varnish or water-based varnish. I will talk a bit more about the materials um, later in the video. Um, but I'll just show you the last card in the deck first. Um, it's pretty obvious who the commander is now because uh, you've already seen the other Kalia, but yes, it's Kalia of the Vast. I was a little hesitant gilding a card that's already in foil, but I'm pleased with the way it turned out. The reflection from the card and the leaf are slightly different, so it does add more depth to it. So finally, I can move on to showing you all the materials that you might need to start with gilding. Two good suppliers of gilding materials in the UK are Rights of Limb and Gold Leaf Supplies. I'll put links in the descriptions below. Um, the ones in front of me I got from Gold Leaf Supplies. I think I got the cheapest kit which was about 60 quid, which came with uh, transfer silver and loose leaf silver. In the rest of the kit, there was a cutting pad, a knife, a gilding tip, um, some size, which is the adhesive that you use for the leaf. Usually with the tip, you just get a tiny little bit of grease, like from Vaseline or even from your own fingers, and um, run your fingers through the ends of the, the tip, and that will help the silver or gold to stick to it. You don't want it to be too greased up, because then it's not going to come off onto your card. You want it to be less sticky than the size, which is the adhesive, um, on the card obviously, so that it's going to stick to the card and not to the tip. But unless you want to be super swanky and over the top or you've got unlimited money, there is no reason to not just use imitation. It's cheaper, it's thicker and easier to work with. You can just tear it up with your hands. I think each book was about £10, but then... That's for the more exciting, vibrant coloured patterned ones. Gold and silver and copper colours are super cheap. They're just a couple of pounds per book. And since the cards are so small, it does go a long way. I think there's 25 leaves in a book. And if you wanted to cover a whole card, you can probably get like two leaves will do that if you're not layering it up. But most of the time, you're not even going to want to cover the whole card. You're probably just going to be doing tearing off little sections. So it's going to last you a long time once you buy everything to set up. You don't really need the knife or anything if you're not using real gold or silver. Because like I said, um, the imitation aluminium leaf is much thicker and you can just tear it up with your hands. So I've mentioned size a few times in the video. That is the adhesive that you use to stick the leaf. There are different kinds of size. You can get oil size or acrylic size. Acrylic is water-based. Oil is obviously oil-based. The water-based acrylic size is a lot easier to get hold of. If you're trying to get hold of the oil size, you'll probably have to order from a specialist website such as Gold Leaf Supplies or Rights of Limb. They work a bit differently. The oil sizes, you can get them in various different drying times. So if it says three hours on the bottle, it means that when you apply it, after three hours, it's going to be the right tackiness to apply your leaf but it's not going to stay open for very long. So you've only got a certain amount of time to work with it before it just dries and it's not going to stick anymore. 
I would recommend going for the acrylic size for the cards. Once you apply it, it takes 10 or 15 minutes to be ready and then it will stay open forever, basically. Um, it's never going to dry. So that has pros and cons. It means that you don't have to stress out about, oh my god, I need to rush to finish this. But at the same time, when you're distressing it with wire wool, like I'll show you in a minute, um, it does mean that the wire wool might start to stick to the size as well and it's going to get a bit sort of gummed up and dirty. Um, it's something to watch out for, but hopefully not going to be too much of an issue. The cleanup is going to be easier as well when it's water-based because you don't have to get hold of any white spirit or anything to clean your brushes. When you're applying the size, you want to do it thin and even over the whole thing. So getting a synthetic flat brush is the best thing to use. That's for if you want to go over the whole card. Um, if you just want to do a few little details, then getting a synthetic brush with a pointy tip is the best thing. It doesn't have to be a super tiny, you know, zero or one brush, um, but as long as it has a pointy tip, it's fine. While this first card is drying, I'll show you what I do when I'm just trying to pick out details now to apply the size. So I'm taking my, my pointy brush. I like using synthetic ones um, because they don't shed as much. If it's too soft, it might be difficult to get the detail because it's just going to be flopping around too much. You want it to be slightly sturdy. So I'm just applying it in exactly the same way, really thin and even, but just in picking out the details, just in the little areas that I want. And again, just wait for this to dry for 15 minutes or so, and you can gild with whatever you like. You can use your hands or you can use the gilding tip if you want for these bits. Then I'm going to take a soft brush. I think this is camel hair. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's soft enough that it's not going to damage the leaf or like scratch it in any way. So the process of taking this soft brush and getting rid of all the loose bits is called skewing. So I'm just going to go ahead and skew this one now. You can also use cotton wool if you want. If you wanted to do lots of bits in different colours, it might be easier to do it in stages. So you just paint a bit that you want to be gold, gild it, and then paint your other sections. I've just done a little bit on this, but you can keep going until you're happy with it. Here's another demon card I did earlier, so you can kind of see what you could end up with. Here's one I prepared earlier. I don't actually remember what card is underneath this because I did this a long time ago, but I'm going to show you how I distress them now with wire wool. I buy the 0000, zero, zero, zero grade wire wool. Four zeros. It's the finest that you can get. If you use a more coarse wire ball it's just gonna be a bit more scratchy it's not the end of the world you can also use a very fine sandpaper to do this but you don't want to be damaging the card too much i think with sandpaper you've got more of a chance of just damaging the actual card so i'm just going to be rubbing in the areas that i want to reveal and I don't want to rub too much so that I'm like going through the ink and then you can't even see what the card was. I just want to rub away enough so that I can see the image again. So you can now go back over this. If you end up rubbing too much off and you're like, oh, I kind of wanted more gold over here. You can still um, size over the top and... What you're going to be doing is just 
creating layers, which could look quite cool. Like some, maybe you want um, a layer that's underneath to be more distressed than the layer on top. That's what I did with the planeswalkers that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So by now, my first card should be ready to gild. You'll be able to tell when the size is ready if you just touch it with the back of your knuckle. You'll test the tackiness and it should feel something like masking tape. So if you take masking tape and touch it with your knuckle and then compare it to the size, that should be ready. But with the acrylic size, you don't really need to worry about that too much because you know after 20 minutes, as long as you've not applied it super thick, it'll be ready for you. So this card is skewed and ready to be distressed like the other one. I'll show you quickly how to varnish your cards. I'm using a water-based varnish that came with my gilding kit, but any water-based varnish will do. Uh, the process is the same as sizing, so you just want to take a flat synthetic brush and apply a smooth, thin coat. If you brush one way and then the other, it'll be nice and even. It's probably better to varnish your cards if you are going to distress them, just to fix everything down. But it's perfectly fine just to sleeve them if you're not going to varnish them for protection. The Angel of Serenity has been varnished and the Archangel of Strife hasn't been. Um, but if you compare the two angels, you can't really see much of a difference to the sheen. That's pretty much it. You should all know what you're doing now. If you've got any questions, comment below and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching. I hope it helped. Give me a like if you liked it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.